Hello, I'm Carrie Noonan. Um, uh, this is Outsiders in Othello. Uh, these are just some thoughts I have about different characters who are outsiders because I think Shakespeare's Othello is very much about outsiders. So it's very obvious to see that, of course, Othello is an outsider. He's an outsider because of his ethnicity, which, of course, we can argue whether he is Moroccan or whether he is Sub-Saharan African, um, but he's an outsider because of that. Um, he's also an outsider because he is not the same class as the Venetians. He has risen through the ranks to be general, and he's, it's gotten him as high as you can possibly go. He's the head of all the armies, but he's not of the same class. He's also an outsider because he didn't grow up there. He's not from there. He's an immigrant. So he's an outsider in all of these ways. And he's also a military man who hangs out with a lot of non-military people which again makes him an outsider. When he's talking to the Duke or the Doge of Venice, he's the military guy and they're all the like regular government guys. Um, so where he's an insider is when he's on Cyprus and then he's with his military people. And there, other people are outsiders. Um, so I see him negotiating that outsiderness in various ways in the play. Iago is an outsider. Iago is lower class. We know this because he's not marrying into a senator's family the way a fellow is. We know this because of how he talks. We also know this because he finds it so hard to rise in the ranks. He's trying to do what a fellow did, which is to rise up through the ranks, and then he meets this ceiling. He also, everyone calls him Honest Iago, and that's not just an ironic statement on the fact that he's a big old liar and everybody is taken in by him. It's also the way upper class people talk to lower class farmers and yeomans. Oh, honest Thomas, yes, my good man, give me some of your wheat. You know, it's sort of a, something that you say, ah, oh, my good fellow, ah, oh, my honest watchmaker. You know, it's, it's sort of, you're talking down to him. And I tell my students, it's one of the words that it's like ringing a bell in the play. Honest, cuckold, moor, um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of them that we could, jealous, that occur over and over again. It's like it's like every time it comes up, it's like that bell is ringing again. And honest is one of them because it just digs into Iago every time someone says it. Yes, it means he's fooling them and so he's succeeding. And it also means they're kind of putting him down. Um, he's also an outsider. Even in the military world, even though that is his world, he's an outsider because he's hit that glass ceiling for him. He can't rise above where he ensign is as high as he's gonna go because he doesn't have the class and he doesn't have the connections other than that. And he's so, that's why, one of the reasons why he's so angry at Othello, that Othello did it and he can't. So then you look at Michael Cassio. He's an outsider. Why? Because he comes from Florence. He's not a Venetian. He's coming in from the outside to fill this job. He has no idea of the politics that's going around about who didn't get that job. Um, and he, he's university educated. Um, unlike all the soldiers under him, um, he, he knows Othello, but he's not part of Venetian society. So he's an outsider too, and he also he doesn't drink, which makes him an outsider to the fellow soldiers. Of course, Desdemona is an outsider. She's a total insider in Venice because she's the upper class, she's a senator's daughter, but of course she's a woman, so she's never taken seriously. And then she travels to Cyprus where she's totally a fish out of water. There is nobody in Cyprus who is one of her own. She's a woman in an army camp, and she doesn't belong. And there's nobody she can go to. Other wives who have problems with their husbands, you, have, you can go to your mom's house. You have your neighbors. She has no support system. She's only got Amelia, and Amelia can't do all that much. So she is very isolated once they get to Cyprus. The only connection she has really is Othello, and that goes badly. Um, and then you have Amelia. Amelia is acting as... Desdemona's um, lady-in-waiting, but it's an odd thing because she's not a maid. She's not lower class enough to be a maid, um, and yet she's not Desdemona's equal either. First of all, because, as any army wife can tell you, you get the rank of your husband. And second of all, because Desdemona was raised as a patrician. She's a, a noble woman. So they're not equals, and yet Amelia, sometimes as the nurse in Juliet, Romeo and Juliet, she's got more worldly experience, and she's trying to shield Desdemona, but because of the class difference, there's only so much she can do. And then you get, uh, I can't remember her name, Bianca, I think it is, um, Cassio's um, mistress. She's an outsider. Why? Because she's a courtesan. 
she's in love with Cassio and he's dissing her all over the place. He's married, he doesn't care about her, he gives her um, a handkerchief and says, hey, make a copy of this for me, baby. Um, he doesn't come to dinner when he said he would. She's an outsider because she, although she fits into the army society, it's like being a collaborator in the war in a way. She's a Cypriot. She's one of the people that they've conquered and she's hanging out with the conqueror and nobody is on her side. Um, and then she even gets blamed for stuff uh, when it was none of her business. So she doesn't have anybody on her side either. So you have all these people who are outsiders kind of bumping up against each other in the play. And the only one who really talks about their outsiderness really is Iago. And he talks about it to us, the audience. We get to hear his thoughts. Othello makes reference to it a bit when he talks in his speech to the Senate at the beginning. But I just find it really interesting that this is a play really just about outsiders. And that's what I have to say about that.